Hi everyone, here we go with chapter 15, Poetry Festivity. Bert Brisbane was waiting at the door for us. Hurry on in, it's freezing, he said. Mr. Morales helped Mrs. Brisbane carry in our houses and all the bags of food and bedding. Who knows how long they'll have to stay, he said. Mrs. Brisbane went to make a pot of tea and soon Mr. Brisbane was cleaning Og's tank. Mr. Morales may be the most important person at Longfellow School, but the principal rolled up his sleeves and cleaned out my cage. He didn't even complain about what was in my potty corner. He did wear gloves and washed his hands afterward. This is a good lesson for all of us, said Mrs. Brisbane as she brought in a tray of steaming cups of tea, a plate of cookies and some yummy pieces of broccoli and lettuce for me. If you decide to have a pet, you have to take total responsibility. Mr. Morales munched on a cookie. I think they took responsibility for themselves. How on earth did such small creatures knock down that big bag? I was wondering about that too, said Mrs. Brisbane. I think it was teamwork. A frog and a hamster? Never heard of such a thing, said Bert. I sure wish I'd seen those two. He smiled and shook his head. I always knew that Humphrey was sharp as a tack, but now we know there's a lot going on in Og's head too. Boing! Og croaked, and he lunged at the side of his glass box. Mrs. Brisbane chuckled. He's feeling better. Looks like he wants to play a game of leapfrog. Leapfrog is a game? Had I been wrong about Og since that very first night? Instead of trying to scare me, he wanted to play? Like Mr. Brisbane, I wasn't sure what went on in Og's head, but he had some good ideas, like rescuing me. He even had another sound he could make. Nobody knew it but me, and that made me feel kind of special, like a friend. The sun came out that afternoon, and so did the snow plows. While the yards were still covered with snow, the streets were clear, and cars traveled freely again. Across the street from the Brisbane's, two children built a snowman. Inside the Brisbane house, I was more than happy to run mazes and play hide-and-seek with Bert for old time's sake. Og watched from his glass house, but said very little. By Monday, the roads had improved enough to go back to school. Thank goodness, because the poetry festival was coming up on Friday and there was still a lot of work to do. Some of the students had worked on memorizing their poems or writing them out at home over the long weekend. Most had not. Garth Tugwell had changed poems three times. On Monday, he changed again. Mrs. Brisbane sent him to the cloakroom to memorize his new selection. Mrs. Brisbane surprised Kirk by asking for his help. You've been a lot better lately about knowing when to be funny and when to be quiet, she said. Now I need your help. We don't want this poetry festival to be too serious. We want it to be fun. Would you introduce the poems for us? Kirk's whole face lit up. Sure. Be sure to make it funny, she told him. By the end of the day on Tuesday, the bulletin board was covered with illustrated poems the students had copied out. Along the edge of the board were cut out pictures of famous poets like Longfellow to a guy named Shakespeare and a lady named Emily Dickinson. Late in the day on Wednesday, my classmates finished their Valentine mailboxes. What they did with ordinary cardboard boxes was excellent. Some of them were covered with red hearts, glitter, and pieces of lace. Others were covered with buttons and lots of paint. Garth had a big dinosaur on the side. Miranda's mailbox had cut out pictures of her family pasted on, on her mom, dad, Abby, Amy, baby Ben, and yes, Clem. Tabitha's mailbox had pictures of basketballs, footballs, and soccer balls glued across the outside. Then, surprise, Mandy presented Og with a green box with pictures of frogs and insects all over it. And AJ gave me a box covered in golden furry looking material. It wasn't real fur, I checked. As nice as, as, nice as that was, I felt sad, sad, sad because no matter how many Valentines I received, there was no way I could make Valentines for everyone in the class. How can I let them know how much I valued their friendship? I was still feeling low when Aldo arrived Wednesday night. He was in an unusually good mood. It's a beautiful evening, gentlemen, and I have good news to share with you. 
he announces he wheeled in his cart. I could use some good news, although I squeaked back. Boing, at a dog. Aldo pulled a chair up next to my cage. Instead of pulling out his lunch or a treat for me, he pulled out a piece of paper. Behold, my first grade from college, a test in psychology. I wondered if he was in class with Natalie, the babysitter. My grade, as you can plainly see, Aldo held up paper up to my cage, is an A. Can you believe it, buddies? Three cheers for Aldo, I squeaked as I hopped on my wheel for a joyful spin. I haven't shown this to Maria yet. I'm saving it for her Valentine's present. As, along with some flowers and candy, of course. I think this grade will be her favorite gift. Aldo leaned back and smiled with satisfaction. Og dove into his pool with a huge splash. I think a little water got on Aldo, but he didn't seem to mind. Splash away, Og, my friend, Aldo said. It makes a happy sound. Og splashed because he was happy? All I thought about the splashing was that it was irritating. Aldo was grinning from ear to ear, almost like a frog. You see before you a happy man. There's nothing better in the world than to have someone to share good news and even bad news with. You see, Maria is my wife, but she's also my best friend. I stopped spinning because I felt a little dizzy. I learned a bit about friendship this year by watching my classmates in room 26. There were friends who got really mad, but made up afterward. There were friends who stuck together through thick and thin. There were friends who reached out to you even when you didn't think you needed a friend. There were friends who would actually rescue you when you were in trouble. There were new friends, old friends, silver and gold friends. Later that night, I was sorry, sorry, sorry. I'd ever doubted Og was my friend. I hadn't understood that sometimes a frog feels jealous and sometimes he feels splash happy but he had come through for me when I needed help. So how do you say thank you to a frog? I decided to write a poem, not just a roses are red, frogs are green poem, but a poem that said what I really felt. I pulled out my notebook and started to write. The next day was spent rehearsing for the poetry festival and straightening up the room. Boy, those kids' tables can get pretty messy. I didn't pay much attention. I was hunkered down in my sleeping nest, writing my hamster heart out. Friday was Valentine's Day and everyone was excited. In the morning, the students mailed their Valentine cards in a big box on Mrs. Brisbane's desk. During recess, the teacher sorted out the cards and delivered them, humming happily as she dropped them in the boxes. After recess, the students opened their cards. There was a lot of giggling and even some crunching since Mrs. Brisbane had also dropped candy hearts in all the mailboxes. Out of the blue, AJ shouted, hey, hold on here. That got everyone's attention. I got a card from Martin Bean. Seth groaned loudly. No, listen, he says he's sorry, AJ explained. I got one too, said Garth. Miranda and Heidi had also gotten I'm sorry cards from Marty. But he's so mean, Mandy blurted. People can change, said Mrs. Brisbane. I think it must have been quite difficult for Martin to write those cards, and he gave them to me to deliver. Maybe it's time to give him a second chance. Whew, giving Mean Bean a second chance wouldn't be easy. Yet I recalled that once he got started, he was actually pretty nice when he handed out prizes at the birthday party. Maybe all those talk with him had done some good. No wonder he got that A in psychology. I'll give him a second chance, I exclaimed. Of course, it came out squeak, squeak, squeak. I haven't forgotten you, Humphrey, said Mrs. Brisbane. She came over to help Og and me with our mailboxes. We received cards from all the students in class. Each one was special, but the one I remember the most was from Miranda. Though hamster doesn't have a rhyme, I love you, Humphrey, all the time. She figured out how to write a poem with the word hamster in it after all. I had one more card in my mailbox than Og. It was from Brazil. Yes, Miss Mac had remembered me with a teeny little card that said, Humphrey, you will always be a special friend. Love, Miss Mac. She sent a letter to the whole class as well with readings from her pupils in Brazil. 
As wonderful as it was to receive those cards, I kept one eye on the clock all morning because I had a special mission to accomplish during lunch. A hamster's work is never done. The bell finally rang and the students left, which was good. But Mrs. Brisbane stayed behind, which was bad. She busily rearranged all the chairs into a big half circle. She picked scraps of paper off the floor and straightened a few tables. Wasn't this woman going to eat? At last, she glanced up at the clock, picked up her lunch bag, and hurried out of the room. I didn't have much time, so I tore a page out of my notebook, jiggled the lock that doesn't lock, flung open the door, and slid down the leg of the table. Og started boinging in alarm, but I didn't have time to explain. I raced across the floor as fast as my legs would carry me, straight to Mrs. Brisbane's desk. When I got there, I gasped in with surprise. My plan was to climb up her chair and take a giant leap onto the desk. It was dangerous and risky, but sometimes you have to be bold. However, the teacher had ruined everything by moving her chair far, far, far away from her desk and into the circle of the other chairs. Even worse, her desk didn't have legs to climb up. It was a solid block of wood. My big plan was completely spoiled. The clock ticked away. My only choice was to set the piece of paper on the floor near her desk and scramble back to the table. I grabbed onto the cord from the blinds and began to swing back and forth until I got up to the top of the table. I took the final leap and scurried back to my cage, pulling the cage door shut behind me. Boing, 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 croaked Og. You'll understand soon, I told him, I hope. After lunch, Mrs. Brisbane returned to the classroom, followed by her other students. The room mothers arrived with punch and cookies. Next, the other parents entered. Everyone was so busy saying hello and admiring the decorations that I lost track of Mrs. Brisbane. I could hear her though. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can take your seats, we're ready for the poetry festival to begin. She talked about what we'd been studying and all the hard work we'd put in. Then she turned the celebration over to Kirk Chen. Kirk was in good form. He introduced each student with a short poem. The rhymes were funny, but they didn't hurt anybody's feelings. For instance, when it was Heidi's turn, Kirk said, here's something fun by Heidi Hopper. When it comes to poems, you can't stop her. He introduced Tabitha by saying, Tabitha's new, but boy, can she rhyme. We hope she stays long, she, we hope she stays a long, long time. And for AJ's poem, he said, AJ's poem makes him proud, so don't be surprised if he speaks real loud. AJ did too. I was proud, proud, proud of my classmates as one by one they stood in front of the room and recited their poems. Heidi recited the frog poem she wrote. Instead of her smiley poem, Tabitha performed a funny poem about a baseball player named Casey. Saya recited the Dev poem. Pay attention art, lost his place in his poem, but he started over again and did fine. If anybody forgot a word, Mrs. Brisbane whispered it and nobody seemed to notice. The parents clapped heartily for each and every poem. I did too. Then my heart sank as Mrs. Brisbane said, that concludes this year's poetry festival. I hope you'll all stay for refreshments. My plan had failed utterly. I glanced over at Og. He was still smiling, but he didn't know what I had planned. But Mrs. Brisbane kept talking. I have one more poem I'd like to share. I found this scrap of paper on the floor as you arrived. I think it expresses the feelings the children in this room have for each other. It's very tiny and a little hard to read, but I'll try. A friend doesn't have to be a work of art, just have a heart. A friend doesn't need to have fur or hair to care. A friend doesn't have a thing to do, but like you. A friend doesn't need to say a word to be heard. It's not so hard to be a friend in the end. The room was silent until Heidi's mom started the applause and everyone joined in. There's a scratchy kind of scribbling at the bottom. I can't make out the name, said Mrs. Brisbane. Would the pupil who wrote this like to stand up and identify him or herself? I was standing up all right, and I squeaked at the top of my voice. I wrote it. I wrote it for Og. It's my valentine to him. Sounds like Humphrey knows who wrote it, Mr. Golden joked, and everybody laughed. Everybody except Og. Boing, boing, he shouted, hopping up and down. 
At last, I'd gotten through to him, and now I knew exactly what he was saying. You're welcome, Hog, I replied. You're welcome, you grinning, green, lumpy, bumpy, hairless, Google-eyed, cricket-eating friend. You're entirely welcome. Later that night, I looked over at Og as he dove into his swimming pool with a giant splash. He looked the same as ever, yet everything was different. What had seemed like a sneery leer was really a friendly grin. The splashing that once annoyed me made me feel good because I knew Og was happy, happy, happy. And a lunge that once scared me just meant Og wanted to play a game. Sometimes humans are hard to understand, especially when they act mean, like Marty Bean, or get crabby, like Abby. But with patience and a little psychology, you can usually figure them out. It's the same with frogs and even hamsters. I've made a few mistakes, but I've managed to keep my old friends in room 26 and make a new one too. Suddenly, my heart went boing as I thought about my shiny silver new friend my friend Og. Of what shall a man be proud if he is not proud of his friends? Robert Louis Stevenson, Scottish novelist and poet.